country. Take us to 104.7. Did I win a donut? Did you win donuts? Yes, you did. I did. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with all those donuts? Because it is a whole dozen, you know. Well, I'm going to share them with my employees. Ah, all right. Share them is good. Especially, mm -hmm. especially for Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who, it is. Who, who am I talking to? Cheryl Kameen. Hi, Cheryl. Where are you calling or from? Park River. Okay. Things okay out there this morning? Yeah. All right. Mexico, the skyline's colored by chemical plants put bread on the table of the working man. Where the working man does his best to provide safety and shelter for kids and a wife. Giving them a little love so every day, making all the time to keep the wolves away. So I can tell you what I know about meteorites after studying them a lot the last couple of years is that, yes, they're going to be magnetic. There's lots of different kinds of meteorites. A lot of Lake Superior rocks have iron and magnetite and things like that in them that are magnetic, so you can't get too excited when you find a magnetic rock up here. But I knew this was an oddball the minute I laid eyes on it. Another thing, when a meteorite hits the earth, they usually fracture. I clean this with alcohol so you can see the, you can see the fracture line right here. Look at that metal sparkle. You can see the fracture line. Same with the other side of it right there. Never mind the saw mark. Then the other thing is this is 50% silica and basically 50% silica and 50% metal. And when this 
Now this is my theory. I'm no scientist, but from what I've read, when they come through the atmosphere, they'll get ablation on them. Kind of like a melted candle when it melts due to the, inten due to the intensity. The silica melts. The silica in the metal melts. If you look at this underneath the jeweler's loop, you can see all the silica is in bubbles from the heat. And you can see where it, get down here in the camera, you can see what they call ablation, where it kind of melts like a candle. And there's also, there's another thing they look at are these little, let me jack up the power here. Find some good ones on here, right here. See these wave marks? Like when you're welding and you're welding a bead, that's created from heat. In some of my pictures, you'll see there's about a one millimeter varicose around the outside perimeter of the whole, the whole sample, especially if you look at my pictures I'm gonna post with this video. This is polished. I run this through my tumbler to polish it up. But you'll see on the outside edge, you'll see that varicose before I polished this. And what that is, that's from the intense heat on the outside. Now, the one thing this meteorite did not have when I found it is the uh, fusion crust, which really doesn't mean a whole lot because, I mean, it does. That's, that's a telltale sign. But I found this in the river underwater. God only knows how long it's been there and been tumbled and the fusion crust falls off, deteriorates. So that's a little story on that dude. It was pretty easy to spot in river. That's what started my rock hunting right there. That's what started all this Lake Superior stone searching. I had to go see if I could find me another one of these because there's nothing, there's nothing I've found that's even close to it. Um, anywhere on the internet. The only thing that's close to it is other meteorites. But um, that's the story on that. I thought it might interest you. Took some good video of the report. You can kind of look at it. and That's what's in my rock.